Hi everyone, welcome to Adobe Live. We are live from San Francisco uh, after three days of live stream about Woo. compositing in Photoshop. Oh, Photoshop, Photoshop. And this is our last guest. Oh, uh, I'll finish it strong, hopefully. Yeah. Let's do this. Be strong, Mike. Yeah. Michel Campo. Yes. Mike Campo. I'm going to pull out my old man glasses because my eyes are tired today. So this yeah. will help with all the lights and stuff. Yeah, we could change, change our voice maybe. That's right. Really? It's like my Clark Kent look maybe mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> <laughs> right oh yeah thanks for joining everyone i see myself in the chat angelo simon what's up <laughs> it's great uh yeah we'll be live for two hours with uh, photoshop master mike campo right. that you can follow i invite you to follow his behance account yep. twitter twitter uh, instagram, instagram. Like, you know, whatever yeah whatever, whatever. <laughs> and always uh Always a very inspiring work that you Thank share. You. So Thank it's you. great. And uh, as you said on day one, I invite you also to watch the replay from Tuesday and Wednesday um, because you were talking about it. The, the fact that if you don't work for a customer, you keep working, you keep creating. Uh, right. Every time you have an idea, up, yep. you sketch something and you keep a list of ideas keep down. And you, you know, and I, I don't usually jump on my ideas right away. Like I said, I let them just kind of sit in a list and if that idea keeps bugging me to come back and then that's when I know I jump. I kind of jump in so um, hi Danielle Eleonor oh she says you look amazing oh <laughs> well thank you thank you Eleonor um, you hey, know hey, I was here. reviewing yesterday and I was oh and I just wanted I was thinking in my head I'm like oh you know we never really said this before but you know the work I'm doing now I'm not getting all into the details and doing okay you know like skin retouching and clean up and hair I mean but uh, because because you master everything well, that's because we're here thing. for compositing right so yeah but you know it's more just how to make images come together yeah. so you know and we have two hours like so an that, idea yeah, yeah how to, uh, to so I'm just trying to cover you know techniques and things to look for when you're compositing and not worrying okay. so much about you know, hairs and details. skin tones and details because oh, I love there's to plenty see of Google content about for it. that. <laughs> no, so it just true. dawned on me, like, you know, maybe that's something to just mention this time. So. Yeah, no, it's, a, it's a good point. Yeah. Okay. Great. So awesome. what do you want to do? Um, so today we're just going to do some Photoshop, Photoshop, no CGI, just yeah. photos with photos. Because, um, uh, yeah, you, you are using Modo. Yeah. Uh, on day one and day two to include some uh, 3D materials and 3D objects within your composition where today you take today picture on stock, you combine everything yeah. and you create something new. We're just in Let's Photoshop. do it. So we learn a lot today. That's great. You know, and I was going to focus on some studio stuff and mm -hmm. bringing those things into environments. Um, or, you know, you can do vice versa. You can go out and shoot your environments and then come back to the studio and shoot your objects or people to stick in there and yeah, things to look for. because you mentioned that you're a photographer too. Yes. So, um, you know, so, to you know th this project here um, yeah. just launched for Under Armour. So this was, you know, the guy was shot in studio. Um, Under Armour is the, is the brand? Is the brand, yeah. Okay. Um, shot in studio. So, you know, I had to create a background that sort of mimicked how he was lit and shot Ooh. in studio. So. Oh, so he, he was showed uh, inside? Inside with strobes and lights. and um, So, now he has so to I had to create an environment outside. that Whoa. feels, you know, and it's obviously this is very stylized, but at least it all looks together. And, you know, there's a reason for the flashes because we added some lightning, uh, oh, lightning point. in the clouds. So that that's your light source right there. So, um, so this was kind of the inspiration of what I was going to do today. Okay. So nice. um, let's just launch Photoshop here. Hi, Pavelo. Thanks for joining. We're live from San Francisco, so uh, let us know in the chat where you're from. So let me just open my Adobe Stock libraries here. So I was just pulling some, searching for some images, and I was thinking, you know, that shot had some elements. It's the rain uh, was on the guy. So yeah. I thought, okay, night scene, kind of dark, same look, but let's do snow, maybe snow. Oh, okay. um, let me just start with the model. So I'm going to start with the model same way I did for that so if you know I had a photographer come to me and say hey we shot this in studio we need to create this background for our environment uh, and snow would make and sense snow is in you know yeah, yeah because you know she's got the hood up and she's ready to go so this is very artificially lit um, you know there's very harsh light sources so this isn't you know sunset sunrise moonlight uh, which is very soft okay uh, so I have to 
when I get into the backgrounds, I have to kind of look for that those cues in the background image when I start putting things together. So uh -huh. we can go through that too when I'm searching through Adobe Stock, just kind of show you things that don't work and tell you why as I'm browsing, say all of that, it's a nice shot, but it won't work yeah. because of the lighting. So, um, but first let's start with isolating her. Um, and I think this one, I think we can just go quick select right off the bat. Um, she's got a pretty good edge on her already. Uh, so let's just jump in and see how this goes. Yeah, and this is yeah. a high resolution. Yeah, and this is picture. the full so, resolution. Yeah, so I, I already, you know. You have some details. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't do the preemptive Adobe stock, you know, before I bought yeah. the license. I Directly already got the license so that I can get a clean shot. Yeah, so oh, you got it on stock too. Oh yeah, I didn't realize. Yeah, yeah. So this is I from Adobe you, you Stock. I took the picture. No, no. This is Adobe Stock here. Okay. Well, it looks right. Huh? So we're just gonna do a quick, uh, quick refine edge, or yeah, or maybe you. Well, have I'm just gonna technique. get. You have your brush technique, no? Well, no. This I'm gonna use just the the tools in the Photoshop, refine the refine edge. I think it'll work pretty good on this one. Okay. Um, oh. Oh, and Mr. Steadicam is asking, will you use the channels? This one, we could probably use channels to pull out the fur. Ah, for the fur. For the fur. But for the rest of it, we'll get a little tight just because some of the, she wears the shadows black. into oh, the yeah. black, you know. Um, so it'll cause a lot of brushing, which, you know, if we're looking which at time-wise, you know, I just already have a pretty quick selection of her with this quick, so I can just get a couple of these edges that are bleeding here. Now with quick selection, the more and more you do your minus plus to it, the more refined it gets. So if you do a quick swipe around the girl, you know, so if I just did this quick swipe and it, here I'll undo that, you know, and it bleeds into this pant yes, area, yes. you know, I just do the minus yeah, we selection. Yeah, so it, so that way it's, it's starting to refine Pushes those pixels. It's mm. gonna be more selective. The more and more you do it, the closer you get. So on the first pass, don't try to, like have it go clean all the way around. It's gonna probably bleed into areas, but if you keep that selection and you go back, it almost learns like, the more that you brush it in. And do you like the new uh, Select and Mask uh, UI? I like the UI, but I uh, I like the Define Edge. I mean, I, I oh, don't yeah. know, something about that just seemed to work. So I'm just gonna dupe and option click here to create a mask. So we have this mask. Mm -hmm. So now let's pop open this. So if you, you know, let me go back. So if you just double click oh, that's your the mask. New UI. Yeah. Yep, that's new Select UI. Select and mask, yeah. So then it pops into the new UI. Make sure you have the refine brush, not the quick select brush, because then you'll be driving <laughs> yourself crazy. <laughs> um, and I usually will do, uh, for this, I'm just trying to get this fur, because everything else, like now that I have it on a yeah, white exactly. background, it's pretty yeah. clean. Yeah. Um, you know, and it has some of those little details yeah, that good. keep, yeah, so it's, it did a pretty good job. Um, but I think I'm just gonna refine edge right around this fur. So I want a radius pretty tight because you have the little hairs that are coming out. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm gonna just do a one pixel, keep the smart radius on and then just sweep across the, <laughs> this area here. I think she has some hairs coming out here. And I, and I usually just go back just to make sure oh, I'm covered. Yeah, just to make sure I'm covered. So then it thinks about it and it pulls it together. So that's pretty yeah. good. Um, and it's on white, so we're obviously going to put this on a night background. Yeah. So, that, so you know, some of this blending, yeah. you're not going to. It's not going to be as chunky as it would blend with the background. Yeah, yeah, as it looks in this white. So um, that's pretty solid. So I'll just hit Maybe OK. Maybe there is a. If you go back to select the mask. In here. In the view mode, do you have? Oh, there is black. Yeah, yeah, you, you can do it on black. Double check why why you are working on it. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I just didn't want to do that because then it yeah, then you mean like there. I can't see the actual edges. Yeah. So oh, in this good. case, so you know, same with in black and white, it's uh, like the Japanese yeah, that's mask. the mat. Oh. Yeah, so that's what the alpha is gonna nice. look like when it's done. So you know, if you click through these, you know, onion skin, whatever. So I tend to do if. I'm going on a black background, I'll put it on white. If I'm going on a white background, sometimes I'll put it on black just to, to make, make sure, sure I'm getting the edges because if yeah. it's 
if she was shot on white and I put it on white, I'd start losing, it'd start blending in it too, and I don't see where that edge is. Okay. All right, so. So this is where, um, if you option click on your mask, it will give you a view. <laughs> you see? Yeah. Um, so this is where I just double check my mask. You can see it has a little bit of that yeah. funky where the brush does. So I just do a brush. Again, laptop keyboard drives oh, me crazy. Please. Yeah. Oh. Well, no. I, so oh, I'm no, changing this to overlay, and okay. then indecise. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So and then I always, you know, instead of picking my brush. Um, yeah. What do you do? Uh, you go through the brushes. Well, I, if I have a brush, I can just hold down Control yeah. Option, yeah, bigger, and then. Ooh. side to side and then up and down makes it harder, harder. softer yeah. so um, that's just a good thing to remember when you are using your whack them side to side up and down just a little little tip there um, so then I uh, shift control to give my so Holger is asking you, you know, you selected uh, one pixel alteration, you know, when you did the refined edge, mm -hmm. he's asking you why, like, does it prevent hollows from appearing? That's why he's asking. Well, it's just the, it's the refinement of the search of the pixels for the contrast. Oh, okay. So, so like, the bigger you get, the broad, like, the softer it almost is. And if we have hairs, you know, so if it was oh, like a fuzzy, yeah, I want refined. If it was just a fuzzy edge or something organic like I would probably go wider if I was in uh, doing this area because then it's searching like a broader range of pixels to find the contrast oh, so sense. Um, so now I'm just doing overlay so the reason I do overlay instead of just a regular brush is I won't get any bleed so if I, I'm brushing white on black it doesn't do anything but if I brush here and I brush out it's just gonna brighten up the the area I need cleaned up. So I'm just kind of hitting this real quick. Make sure there's no little funky bleed throughs. And we have a question from uh, Angelo. He's asking, uh, so would you do the same technique with a green screen, uh, green screen? And what about the spill? You know, how can you decontaminate oh, color? Yeah, green. I do a ton of green screen stuff. So oh, yeah. green screen, I at do. Your studio? Yeah. You What's have that? a green screen at yeah. your studio? And, and a lot of the photographers I work with, I request them green. shoot green screen oh, now okay. because I can just do a selective color. Boom, boom. it's done. Boom, yeah. And then I can usually just use hue satch to go oh. around the edge yeah. and shift the green to more of a skin color. Oh, you shift it? Yeah. I just shift it. You don't desaturate? I don't desaturate. Well, the shift has a little desaturation just because it's kind of vibrant, but I shift it to the red. To the right to tone. To the reddish yellow areas and then desatch a little bit and then it becomes more of a natural color <laughs> nice. um, and usually you can just do that with one adjustment layer like you just put hue satch select green boom um, so that's a good question which is why a lot of people shoot green screen because it's a really quick easy separation um, and uh, thank you Bishram for sharing I was waiting for you so I will send you a tweet right, right now all right so I'm going to make this a spread horizontal format and I'm going to size it down just for speed on this. Boom. All right, here we go. Let me just say this. I like the name of this um, Mr. Adobe St stock is sexy woman, apparently. And uh, uh, Mr. Steady came and says, yeah, you can import the picture into After Effects and do the spill removal. Yeah. That would be for yep. one picture, although, I mean, yeah, you would have to create a composition, like a, a big one, you know, because usually with After oh. Effects, you, you, you work oh, for HD. The yeah. screen yeah. res. Yeah, like, you know, with 4K. Key light. Is, yeah. Key light is the name of the yeah. plugin. Um, all right, so let's say this. Yeah, so I just made this wide. So now we have to start looking for stock backgrounds to start dropping yeah, into this. So, um, no. so let's just go to the web just so I can get a little more detailed and um, start talking so let's just do snow whoop, not now but snow night and just see what kind of pops up so we're gonna have to refine this to images and photos okay 
So when I started looking through these the other night, um, a lot of these have the same problem where they're kind of a moonlight or soft night scene. So, you know, like there's artificial lights in it, but if you oh. look at the snow, it's just like a washed out. There's yeah. no contrast. And if we look at... Um, yeah, a lot of contrast in here. Yeah, let me pull this off so I can do side by side here. You know, there's harsh shadows, pretty raw light, and then it falls off quick. Um, mm -hmm. And then if we look at these backgrounds, you know, let's look at the shadow. I'm not worried about the light, you know, because we can find light sources the side, but I'm looking at shadows. So this is too mm. just kind of flat lit. Um, Backlight, yeah. Yeah, see, and, and you get a lot of that with snow. So it's, it's you know, it's going to be a hard to kind of find a matching sort of quality of light and more importantly the shadows in this case because she has a lot of shadows so she's just getting hit almost from behind side okay. not front light so a lot of this has front light um so you know some of these things i know we can use oh yeah um let me just say preview because we're going to want some of the snow falling too. So as I'm looking for backgrounds, I'm keeping that in mind to keep my eyes open. Oh, this is a pretty good one. Because um, we're going to want different levels of snow too, because snow doesn't fall in a plane. It falls in front of camera, it falls behind her. So we need different variations. Um, so this one's, that one's not bad. So this one's not bad for quality of light. Let's just bring it up a little bit. So you can see the harsh shadows, but the image itself just isn't interesting to me for a backdrop. I want some graphic shapes, maybe a little texture, some light. Um, let's just look one more page here. A lot of these have warm light. I want to try to go cool, almost monochromatic nighttime, just to give it that cool feeling, the cold feeling, you know, she's got her hood up. Of course, she's unzipped, but she should probably zip her jacket <laughs> up if it's that cold. But um, all right, so you know this is the problem I ran into last night when I was trying to prepare and look for images. Is That's a lot of these either the quality of lights right, mm -hmm. and then the composition's just ordinary, or it's too filled with things, or it's too busy. Yeah. Um, so and this uh, is where I... There's a question by Zach asking, yeah. uh, what would be the benefit of using stock photo for the snow rather than uh, brushes, you know, with different layers and blur? I'm a, I'm a huge believer in using photo reference okay. as much as possible to do as light, like the least amount of Photoshop effects mm -hmm. to create things, especially like water, fire. I mean, you oh, can okay. make it look good, but mm -hmm. it always has that fake quality or there's things that if you oh, try to sh yeah or if you use photography or you shoot there's just these little um not accidents but there's just variations in them and mm -hmm. dirt to them and things that you just wouldn't predict when you're trying to just create it in photoshop so yeah there could be you could brush it in or you know make water or effects but you're limited to how realistic it can be it can be stylized it can be illustrative realistic but um, I'm a big believer in using photography as much as you can even in my CGI I mean I try to even my maps and I try to shoot real photography reference to put in my CGI when I'm building textures out okay as opposed to procedurals or just painting them in on CGI uh, for the same reason as once I get it rendered into the scene I want photo real as possible so yeah. Which brings me to what we were talking about yesterday mm -hmm. um, about keeping a library of assets. Um, so one of the things I do is anytime I'm out or I go to a new place, um, like I was here in San Francisco, um, I bring my camera equipment with me and I just shoot. I just go out and shoot. But I pick different times of day, different weather. Of the same, oh, uh, in San Francisco you mean? Yeah. Not yeah, necessarily so, the same location, just uh, yeah, just anywhere, you know. And then when you're out there, you know, are you shooting into the sun? So let me just, you know, so here's just a few things while I was in town. Um, we're not going to use this for snow, but you know, so well, you get up and you see the 
sunrise. So you shoot into the sun, okay. turn your back, shoot away from the sun and see how the light's different, um, you know, or sideways to the sun. So these are just some things that you can get up and practice. And I think even, you know, CG guys, Photoshop guys, like just get a camera in your hand and just start shooting and you'll learn quality of light, you know, how the light affects shadows if you're shooting hmm. into it, away from it. Um, so this was, the sun was behind me shooting so that you can see the difference in that light. The sun's covered up by a cloud, so it's very soft light. All of a sudden it peeks out from the cloud, <laughs> sunlight. Um, another thing is like learning depth of field, like realistic oh, depth of field. Um, so, you know, if you shoot with a camera and you can focus forward around the background and see how that affects, then it'll bring that knowledge to when you're retouching and building elements in Photoshop, okay. how to make them look real. Um, and then, of course, you know, nighttime is a whole different animal. So, you know, you're in long, exposure. long exposures. How does the light flare? If you use a high f-stop, you get bright sunbursts. If you use a low f-stop, you get a glow. Um, just things like that that you start learning when you're doing things like ran in the app saw the apple store at four in the morning guess what no one's in there oh at four in the morning too bad there is this car <laughs> yeah well actually i kind of like it it's like parked right in the middle he's ready to go <laughs> um so this is just you know this is a case where i just go out and i shoot back plates or backgrounds so you know something like this i can go back home and if i wanted to shoot a a jogger in this scene I could shoot the jogger in studio I know my oh. camera settings I can set up lights to mimic this background so this is kind of working backwards mm -hmm. or forwards depending on yeah. which way you look at it so you can either have the model and create the background or you have the background and shoot the model for the background so um, you know that's just one of those things I highly recommend doing as as an artist is just buy a camera even if it's a cheap one it will to help you understand how light works and uh, go through that. So, so on that note, I think I'm just, I have a shot here that I think will work for this background. Um, I just have an elements folder of some stuff. So this one has, cause the sky is nice and dark, the shadows are dark and it's mm -hmm. got a yeah, yeah, strong source from light clouds. from there. So, and then I can add in some artificial lights too, uh, to kind of enhance this and have it make more sense. So let me just drag and drop that, close that out. It's just kind of whoop. Come on, Wackham, don't die on me tonight. <laughs> Now I'm just kind of getting it in place. And I like the tangents, the, yeah. you know, the graphic shapes. It all feels pretty good. good. Composition. I think, eh, let's slide her over. She's too dead center for this. Um, all right. So that's pretty good. Um, so now this is where you can look at the quality of the shadows and the lights and are pretty similar uh, in the snow, jacket snow. So that you're already fighting one of the battles of light hmm. source shadows are already matching up. So you don't have to start fake, like over photoshopping it to make it believable. You have a, it's a quicker way to get there as opposed to having to force it the whole time. So now that I have it in there, let's just kind of work on um, getting her in the background, again, color to match up a little bit. Um, so let's just do, this time I'm gonna use color balance, I think. Um, yeah, let's do color balance. So I'm gonna start adding some cyans and blues. So, okay. Aniruda, can you show us how to use green screen for live stream? Oh, that would be amazing. Uh, actually, we are about to publish. Uh, so, Terry White, who was hosting uh, the previous streams, he recorded uh, a series of video that we will publish on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel about how to live stream. So okay. And he will cover the software you need, 
if you want to do a light uh, green screen with right. uh, keying. Uh, in this case here, we are using a, a software called uh, Wirecast, and uh, it works okay. with uh, seriously any kind of uh, even like. A a curtain, it will work. Right. You yeah, need it to have like pulls a out. professional setup. And if we have time, maybe I'll try to look for a yeah. stock photo with green screen and maybe a do a screen? quick. Yeah, yeah maybe do easy. a quick alpha just to show you how okay. easy it is. Um, all right, so now I'm just kind of getting the quality of these match up together. Um, I feel like the background is a little bright compared to her, so I'm gonna. keep some of those highlights all right okay so you know this is just the color to help them just to start being the same family so they start feeling right so oh, the first yeah. thing I notice is that we oh, have this back light source <laughs> and we have some really bad mm -hmm. um, black pixels yeah it's the black pixels bleeding in so mm -hmm. um, you know, we could probably refine the mask, but I think in this case we could probably even just brush in some some color. Uh, let's just see how that looks. To almost give it an extra highlight yeah. along that edge. So what are we doing now? You know? I'm just using a white brush right now. Okay. Um, and if I set it's a soft light or overlay you're gonna get some artifacting oh. so it's just set to normal and I'm just gonna just kind of hit some of these edges okay um, oh, with a clipping mask okay yes. yeah so it's yeah so this is yeah. if I undo my clipping mask and this <laughs> is how I do this is how you work this is how I work I do everything in a clipping mask so it gives me some freedom um, and then I'll group it and call this girl i think the adobe stock was sexy girl but we're just gonna call it girl yeah. for now <laughs> <laughs> which is weird by the way <laughs> yeah she knows she's sexy i don't need to type it on there so um all right so let's just kind of brush this in real quick oh i think i may have moved this once again my palettes are still messed up from yesterday or from the other day there you are, history. Get back over here. All right. Oh, Joe Casillas okay. is suggesting that you can uh, change the blending option on the brush and not on the layer. Is it something that is doable? Yeah, but I, once you're on the, well, actually, if you're on a separate layer and you do it in the brush once, it's still just going to be white unless you're brushing it actually on the object. So this is non destructive. Oh. So this way you can. Just brush black or white, and you can change it to soft light overlay, normal, uh, yeah. multiply screen, and you. And oh, you, you can, can try and, different. And then you can do opacity after the fact. So, hmm. yeah, you could go in and brush on the image and do overlay, but then you're going um, to be limited, limited, or you're destructing the image, so you have to make a duplicate oh. and then oh, you have yeah. to revert back. So, this is just a little flexibility. Um, so I'm just going to do a little black on this side for shadow side. There's some funky little... And yes, we will be giving away a Creative Cloud subscription in about 30 minutes. Someone in the chat. I need to find a good question. Hmm. Hmm, good oh, question. question. Now you even have people in the chat talking in French. Oh. You're yes. talking about hardware. Like what would be the best computer to work in Photoshop? Uh, Mac, PC, Surface Pro. Um. That would be awesome. That the if the computer could make you. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know Photoshop it's it's user. my it's my favorite question <laughs> I get weekly is what software do you yeah. use? And I keep telling people it doesn't matter what software you use. It's like photographers; it doesn't matter what yeah, camera they camera, use. Yeah. Um, why does this keep switching to? We'd love to have like a Creative Cloud My Campo app 
Yeah. <laughs> I install it <laughs> and become as and, good as Mac. And, and boom. To be awesome. Yeah. I'll, I'll have to start programming that software. <laughs> and then I can do it on myself and then make it even better. All right. So I'm just kind of blending. I'm picking some tones from here as well to kind of oh. soften this effect up yeah, a little bit. Oh, yeah. Of um, oh. See, this, this, this whack I'm, is probably going to get left here because I think it's dying. It's so dead. It's, dead. it's not It's not making the plane trip home. I think it's it it's serves me well, though. It's California it's my, weather. Yeah, it may. Killed the yeah, it's just too nice. It's just too nice <laughs> of weather. I didn't like it. It's used to, you know, 30 below wind chills carried in my backpack. It doesn't know what's happening. So let's just show a quick before and after. So this also gives it a little shape. You know, it's a little hot spot from this mm -hmm. from the light. Plus it cleans that up. Oh, yeah, much better. Um, there we go. Yeah, much yeah. better. Let me just do a quick save. Um, so many brushes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Two oh, pens and sometimes. Oh, from the amount of brushes I have, is that what this? Or yeah, or also the fact that you need to oh to yeah. work a lot, you know, on the on yeah. This. I mean, it's. I mean, you get pretty quick at it though. Like once you've done it a few times. Um, another thing you could do is use a clone tool and just kind of clone some of that color oh. and tone in there. Do sometimes I, I do that with hair, but then you get like directional issues. Mm. Um, Oh, so yeah. it gets a little complicated. Like if you, you have to follow the direction of the hair and make sure at least it's not cutting across and mm -hmm. creating a weird pattern. So, um, all right. Well, I think that's pretty good. I think we need to start adding some snow in here. So let's go to. Well, they're all talking about brushes in the chats. Talking about brushes. Uh, okay, let me anyone in the chat using a Kyle's brush? Kyle brush uh, kit What's by Kyle Webster. I'm asking them because I invited him uh, to be live on the stream soon. He didn't reply, but he might come. So but I, I was just wondering if, if there were some uh, Kyle brush uh, Photoshop uh, users. Oh, is that like it's Kai away. from Kai's Power Tools? Is that um, no. it's Kyle Webster. It's okay. Kyle brush. Kitebrush.com. Uh, oh, Kyle. Okay. Yeah. And uh, sorry, it's, it's it was the French yeah, accent threw me off a little bit. <laughs> it was kale. You know, <laughs> yeah. Kale, like the, the, veg Kai. the vegetable. Kai. That's right. Just the vegetable. Just kale brush. I thought it was Kai because wasn't he? Oh, Kai, like a uh, like oh. the guy who helped yep. with Photoshop. Like he made power tools. And yeah. Like way back in the day, though, like people probably don't know who, what I'm talking about right now. Kai. You know. Yeah. yeah. Still around? Still He's still around. around? Yeah, that's around. good. All right, so now I'm just dropping in this background. I'm going to set it to screen. Kai Kraus. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel. Kai Kraus, that's what it was. Yes. Um, but that's a lot of snow, so I, I don't know if I like that one. So good. It's I didn't buy the stock. I tried it first, so that's good. Because <laughs> I don't like you it. You so one credit. Oh. There we go. Just saved it. All right, let's see what else we got here. Okay, that's pretty good. That's a little less snowstorm uh, and more flurry. There are some people in the chat that remember the Kai there we go. Kai Sparrow tools. So oh, hey! So, I did, so there's some older people watching me. That's nice to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah. I like that. Um, so let's now if I can remember which one it was. All right, license image. Uh, Mr. Stelica is asking you: Do you often use a light wrap, wrap for blending in foreground and background? Light wrap. Uh, um, I, not sure I understand the question. Maybe rephrase it, yeah. and I'll let you know. Because I could or could not use it. I don't know. All right, so this is going to update. Yeah, it's just syncing. Yeah, Actually, syncing now. If you roll over, do you have the progress bar? If you roll over the syncing. Oh, let me see. Yeah, you oh, see? Oh, 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 oh. So I just don't have to. Wait. This is the thing Terry was just complaining about. Like, I just need to know how much time I have left. Here Not just waiting. Could be you five seconds over. or five days. 
I discovered it yeah. like two weeks ago nice. by mistake, you know. So. All right. So I think this one, let's just try to drop behind her. Well, let's do it in front of her. I think we'll just have to mask some out because I just, I don't want too much on her face because then it creates a pattern and blotchiness and um, so I'm just going to do a quick layer mask and tone some of this back you know and there's variation in tone for the snow anyway so it's not going to look obvious that you kind of brush some areas out hmm. it's just something you know whenever you're working on things just um, especially if you're doing commercial work or retouching you know having stuff over the face is it's a, not good not good it's a big no-no so um, because that's the first thing people look at is you know in the eyes or the face of the, the talent all right so I also have some elements here uh, let's see so bokey is happening in this shot <laughs> just <laughs> not bokey that's right oh bokey. I probably just gave away the Contest answer that would have been a good one. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, do you pronounce it? That's right, the pronunciation. Um, no, no, right. we can see the ask. Uh, okay, where is it from? Oh, the oh, yeah. boom. <laughs> okay. All right, here we go. So now this is I'm going to do this foreground just to give it again Ooh. just things a little closer yeah. to camera, yeah. um, adds a little depth. Again, probably have to brush some of these off her face. Now you want to tell a photographer and why would you take a picture during a during a snowstorm? Yeah. Come on, man. Why do, why do we just why do we do a lot of the things we do? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Cuz sometimes we're just, just a little weird. Day. Yeah. I know. <laughs> All right. All right, so that's pretty good. Now I I'm, the background starting to get competing with her because um, there's a lot of detail and texture back there and now we're adding snow and it's getting a little busy so I think um, yeah I think for this let's you know almost portrait mode on the new iPhone 7 plus oh yeah yeah you know we can fake that here as well um, especially since we have the background as a layer I think we'll want to do a longer lens shorter depth of field kind of look so I'm gonna throw that background this time I'm gonna just make it a smart object though real quick Oh, Mr. Steadicam uh, gave some precision. Light wrap is basically a blurred version of your background, just affecting the edges. Helps with color integration and tonality. Oh, it's a technique, I guess. Oh, uh, I don't know. Don't know this that's one. what the kids are doing these days. I don't I know. Guess. I'm not <laughs> Mr. Steadicam, <laughs> yeah, that's right. We don't know this one. Um, yeah, maybe that's like uh, frequency separation, and you know, for doing skin work and. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. This new technique. Yeah, yeah which works well it's you know they're always good for certain things sometimes they don't work for certain applications but um but hey if it works for you awesome Do so this way now in 20 minutes we have time now Diego. <laughs> <laughs> simmer down it's gonna happen yeah. all right so we've got um the background we're gonna just do a field blur on this because we can add the bow key um to this one and and it actually will work pretty well because we have a nice strong light source back here. Oh, I don't want to go that crazy with it. Just enough to make it bleed a little bit to make it believable. Um, okay, that's starting to look pretty good. So this has that shallow depth of field look where she's in focus, yeah. um, long lens. And then it also plays off of the bokeh on the snowflake. So it makes sense you know visually and this is what I'm talking about when you're shooting you'll learn you know hmm. little tricks like this just by using the camera and knowing what looks real when people photograph um, so if you have a shallow depth of field that's how you get those little bokeh snowflakes where if you shot um, like really <laughs> dialed down like f18 or whatever all the snowflakes would be sharp you know you'd have a bunch of little ones so um, so let's Let's do this. Now I kept that as a smart object just in case I wanted to go back and tweak it a little Fix. bit more. So, so Mr. Steadicam is not a young kid. Oh. He's more of our generation, you see, from oh. uh, 76. Oh. He's still young. Yeah, we are young. Yeah. 
Um, all right, so this is good. So another thing we can do to integrate her is get a little light spill from our source over here and maybe um. fake a light spill coming from on, on the left side. Here, let me blow up so we can see here. So, yeah, so one more time, Eleanor. So this is not a flu Gaussian, not a Gaussian blur. Nope, it's, it's a, a field, field blur. So, so you can French. add Bokeh uh, to it. Uh, profondeur de champ in French. Depth of field, maybe champ. I mean, it should be, it's Photoshop CC. And there is a Bokeh option. So that's why he's using it. Yeah. Lens yeah, it's one of the new. Objective. Yeah, it's one of the new blur it's galleries. Blur. Yeah, so in the blur gallery, it's the first one. Yeah, first one. So blur. I think even in French we keep the order, so it's the first one. First one. Yep. You could probably use tilt shift and just draw your target point all the oh, way yeah. at the bottom too, and then have it fade up. But um, you know, we don't see from her waist down yeah, where that would would be in focus. So I just went straight with the field blur. So here I'm just gonna do a brush real quick of just some white very light percentage because you know when you have a lot of snow it almost creates like a fog effect so when the light oh, shining mean, through yeah. it you know in it, real it, life it, yeah in real <laughs> life it kind of makes it you know a little milky um, so we also want to kind of add a fake light source off camera to the left. Mm -hmm. so by it doing could this be, uh, could be a street light a car lamp yeah. car you know whatever so little just a little bit here mm -hmm. um, all right so then another thing we can do is um, you know lens flare this a little bit from this light since it's so bright up top um, and that's another thing that I do uh, is create just lens flares and camera and just open shutter shine a flashlight into it you know oh, anyone yeah. can do it create a whole library of different um, lights so I just I have a few that I brought. It's like the light leaks. Light leaks, used, right, yeah. the old film or the old camera yeah. light leaks where it you know, comes in. So you know, these are just, or you can even shoot the camera and just throw it way out of focus and then you get different shapes. So you can use these types of things for oh, light okay. leaks. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so like this is a flashlight off oh, to the side. Next to the. Yeah, um, you know, or you can, you know, okay. put it here. So, you know, you could probably create hundreds of these really <laughs> quick and then have a library of them to kind of call to. So um, you would use the, the blue one? Yeah, I, there's, I have a blue one since it's cool here. That's beautiful. Yeah. Plus it, it creates a nice glow on the side that we need that thing oh, like. Yep. Um, so I'm just gonna drop this on top. Scale a little bit here. We've got a rotate it just so that that light source is hmm. I haven't set it screen yet because I just want to make sure I get see what details I want in the frame and not in the frame okay okay so now we set that to screen it creates a pretty nice milky yeah. overlay but we're gonna want to tone that back a little bit by pushing the blacks to black. Okay. Um, let's get it off of her face here so we can see. Oh, yeah. Um, and then let's go back to normal. I can just, you know, this edge down here is black. Gonna, maybe. Well, yeah, it's yeah. going to create a hard edge there. So I'm just going to eye drop whatever this yeah. tone right here is. Just, you know, it doesn't have to go to pure black because then you're going to be brushing into some of the tone okay up here and here so i'm just trying to grab something that's native yeah to here and just add yeah and just add here a little bit nice yeah and go back the michael bay effect yeah yeah the you michael bay effect so you know there it is before but it's less less expensive than <laughs> that's right <laughs> <laughs> boom that's right all you need is a camera and a flashlight and you're <laughs> good to go and actually i use different flashlights too because I have some of those LED mm -hmm. flashlights um, and they create all different kinds of flares it's pretty cool the difference right. of different lights yeah so uh, just something quick you can do um, to create your own assets of special effects or um, so that's getting pretty good so another thing we could do is maybe some rays um, 
So there's a cool little Photoshop trick that I can do that I will show you. I don't know if it's going to work for this, but I thought I'd show it anyway. Because <laughs> I, I, I just was going to do it. So I just fill <laughs> a layer with black, change it to screen, effects, gradient overlay, angled. Angled, OK. Um, oh, this already has it set up that way, because that's the last time I used it. Mm -hmm. So uh, reset to default so we can Oh, thanks. So okay. we can start from scratch here. Okay. All right. So go to angled. And what that does is it starts, it's like a circular. So it starts at one end and like a gradients, like a clock. Exactly. Um, I'm going to set this to screen. And then in these colors, this is where it gets a little tricky. We're going to, instead of solid, we're going to do noise. Let's move this out of the way so that we can see here. So I usually go to hue set brightness um, so that I can just get a range that I want these to be. So we'll do cool colors. Mm -hmm. And then we can click. Oh, we got to wait for this. Randomize. Oh, nice. Um, and then roughness means it makes it a tighter oh, yeah. light. Transition, yeah. Yeah. So when we go back here, we can, Whoa. you know, we can move this off screen anywhere and to create these light rays. So I'm just going to almost like through these trees here. Ooh. So let's go back to this though. And I want, so you just kind of click through some randomize. And that's TV, uh, Steve Barrett is asking you, uh, the amount of work that you do in uh, using model, you know, like 3D. Yeah. Like if you look at all your productions, what uh, do you always include 3D or? No, I well Photoshop everything. Everything. Okay. Uh, everything's Photoshop. Um, 3D, I'd say makes up 60% of my work, but mm -hmm. a Photoshop is 100% of my work mm -hmm. because even if I'm doing a CG project, it, goes it to always Photoshop. goes into Photoshop, and I'm always compositing. Um, I mean, I very rarely get CGI work that's just like, hey, we just need this whole thing CGI, mm -hmm. you know, just yeah. no photography or anything because they, because uh, they have, you know, photo shoots set up for their product or talent or, you know, whatever, and they just need to supplement it with something that's not practical to do in real mm -hmm. life. Um, so I do have, I do have some projects that are full CGI, but those, uh, you know, in the world that I'm in, um, commercial advertising it's not common as opposed to yeah you know the other side of the coin of uh, video games motion picture you know where it's can be heavily CGI um, so this one's pretty good Let's just kind of move it there. and I just want this to be really subtle actually turned out pretty good that's you know it's oh, it's believable nice. yeah yeah so that's my little light ray trick um, <laughs> and then you know you can control it you can put a mask on here if you want it to roll you know fall off and again this is something you could study from photography yeah you know, yeah or see how, ray be how the light rays you know cut through fog or dust through windows um, huh. so this works pretty good so instead of you know, hand painting all these strokes in and doing a motion blur and then distorting it and warping yeah. it. I found this works, you know. One gradient and that's. <laughs> yeah, one gradient. You can get it pretty close. Then you can go in and hand paint. Um, you know, you could go in and just hand paint some. Let me just grab some colors here. You know, you could hand paint like that and just get the right angle. Hmm. that's a screen you know if you wanted to supplement mm. you know a few spots because then you could have a little more control over where you get yeah, the streak or the highlight or mm. um, how much bleed it has um, 
And Phil is asking you about the color space you use. So you work in uh, uh, Adobe RGB. Adobe RGB, yep. Especially as in much as you can. As much as I can. So usually a lot of I notice a lot of the Adobe stock or sRGB. So I just convert those, you know, to get into my workspace. You have a, requ a request now. Okay. You want a, a polar beer in the back. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's like <"Rrr." laughs> ready to creep on her. Um, all right. This is getting to be pretty, pretty solid. I, I might do a little tone work on her. just to kind of brighten up some edges here to help her separate from from that background a little there all right that's looking pretty good let's just do an overall desatch to kind of bring the tones together as well mm -hmm. um, because it's a little vibrant blue, a little oh, artificial. Yeah. So especially at night, um, artificial lighting, it's gonna almost be, you know, yeah, colorless. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, all right, that's pretty good. So now let's do. Um, Dennis is asking you an interesting question. Yeah. How how do you know when to say it's done? Yeah. I just did. Yeah. No, it's not <laughs> done. <laughs> um, I don't know. You know, I I have a technique where I'm working on something I get to a point where I'm kind of like oh, okay what do I do next on it or you know what does it need I'll shelf it and move on to another project okay open it maybe yeah few hours later yeah or, or next another day. technique is I keep it up on my like if I do a monitors I just keep it up on my screen okay but I work on it so I'm living with it there it's there but I'm not concentrating on it and I find you know if I get up go get a cup of coffee and I come back and I'm like oh Something Details, just caught yeah. my yeah. Something caught my eye. So I, I find like I just don't sit and stare at it, like mm. waiting for it. I'll move on to my next project or another project. Put it on my other screen. Let it live there while I'm working. Or it might be the next day, depending on the deadline, of course. Yeah. You of know, course. Um, but there's time. So I'll you know I find that works quite a bit. And I do a lot of that on my personal projects. Um, if I'm working on something, I'll just keep it on my screen, off to the side while I'm working on my commission work and. Like I'll notice little things and I'll jot notes down, and um, so it, it seems to work for me. Um, all right, so let's just do a copy merged and see what we can do here. Convert to smart object. Um, let's do a lens correction. Let's like bring her to camera right now. She's kind of a little tall. I'm going to go pretty heavy on this one, too. Yeah. Plus, this helps kind of bow the whole perspective of the shot um, together. So it adds a little distortion, um, which brings her a little closer to camera. Mm -hmm. Now, I want some more focus on this face. So I'm going to do a... Um, more light? No, I'm going to do like a sharpen tack sharp technique. So, you know, the high pass technique. So I'll show you... a a way that um, that I do it. I have it set up as a F key action, oh, but okay. um, you guys will get completely lost because <laughs> we'll just rip through it and you won't know what's happening. So, um, so let me just turn this off. So I'll do a copy merged. Let's duplicate this three times. So each one of these layers is going to be a high pass that's going to... Um, used for sharpening but at a different pixel level for each one so okay. uh, the first one's going to be the really fine details so we'll go you know one pixel two pixels the second one we'll spread it out to 15 20 pixels mm -hmm. to kind of get a little bit more shape and then the last one we'll like push it really far to get the really rolling and then i'll show you what that technique does so okay um so if we go high pass let's see it's a low res so i think one might even be let's do a half yeah so we'll do half so it depends on your resolution so these aren't like set numbers um you know if you have a lower res the, you almost have to incrementally yeah. do this based on the Is that on pixel? the file size oh, the pixel okay. size so you know if i had a ten thousand pixel image i the first one would probably be 
two or three pixels, not a half a pixel, because we're only working at a 3,000 image one. All right, so the next one, let's do the same thing. Let's do 20, just see what that looks like. Okay. And then the last one, just go crazy with this one. All right. So here's the different version. So we have the fine detail, the middle, and then the really kind of spread out. So I'm going to set these to overlay. Now they're 100%. So I usually want the, the big one and the middle one very low opacity just so they're creating shape. So you can see it's just kind of punching that shape up. And then the small one we can keep at 100%. Now, okay. if we want to enhance this, if it's not pushing enough, we can go to linear light. And you can see how that punches that up. <laughs> so the dif difference between yeah. overlay and linear light. So same with this. If we wanted to really punch that yeah. up. So this is with it on that's with it off. So I'll throw those into a group. I pass so that I can just brush these on. Oh, there's I missed the step. See, because it's just in my action. Yeah, I yeah, forget. The actions, yeah. um, so let me go to the bigger one. That's where you really see it. <laughs> All right. So I just changed that back to normal. I think it just moved. No, it didn't. Okay, so you get the high pass, but it also gets these kind of funky colorizations in them. So when you um, do an overlay or a linear light, it picks up the the extra pixels, oh, the, colors. the colors of the pixels. So I usually will go in and just completely desaturate these yeah. all the way. So Black it's only white. working on value. Yeah. Um, so that you don't get any casting of the the high pass when it throws the it's usually a cyan and a red you know on one side and then you'll mm -hmm. get you'll get fringing and haloing on your image so um, so let's change that back and your lights then your light at three then your light at three so I'm uh, yeah, the first one is 100 percent Opacity. Yeah, no, it's 100%. I'm wondering. Oh, <laughs> because I option clicked the folder, everything turned off. I was like, wait a minute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So. All right. So here we go. So this is. Three. I'm gonna knock these back. I'm just gonna knock these back to ten percent, or maybe just do this at overlay. I think it's too punchy. All right. So this, and then I'll just fill this with black, and then I'll just brush in the areas that I want it mm -hmm. um, to just bring the focus. Oh. to these areas. See, it's my Wacom that's doing it. It's like holding, yeah. op it's holding option down when I'm not. It's <laughs> driving me crazy. Right, let me get off of there. All right. Okay, Wacom. You only have, what, an hour to, to survive. Yeah, Let's do on. this. We have All a right. mouse, huh? Worst yeah. case. Okay, yeah, that's it. I'm going to the mouse. <laughs> He's driving me crazy. <laughs> Bless you. All right, so we can brush in a little bit here, just around her face, maybe a little bit, 50% to kind of draw the eye up into this area. So, I mean, it's a subtle, but it's enough punch to make the, 
the face, the focus, and oh, then yeah. the rest no, of it no, kind no, of yeah. blurs. So let's do convert to smart That's object. A nice uh, trick. I definitely use it from now. There. So and in some times, pictures. yeah, and sometimes if you know if I get a very graphic background or if it's um, on a color psych wall yeah. and you use it, you have to go in and manually mask in oh, yeah, each one of those the three oh, the, layers the, instead the of doing yeah because sometimes there's certain areas that'll just get a little like chunky or mm -hmm. artifacting um so you'll just want to brush it where you need it or where you want it don't just do an overall psh, high pass and then oh yeah because then all of a sudden you'll get haloing in weird spots and um so i like to just brush it where i need it and um that does a pretty <laughs> good job there weeds out <laughs> oh boy Wizard confirmed. Oh, okay, I guess that was that was it. Um, all right. I mean, I think I'm I'm pretty good with this. So mm -hmm. let's just kind of recap and see where we were. Yeah. Um, you know, shot in studio. Pretty believable with that she's there. I think I want to push this background a little bit more. So I'm gonna. I'm going to just do some overlay. Yeah, just mm -hmm. to get some shadow separation on some of this. Just to help her separate even more. Yes, Ned, Adobe Stock credits like a giveaway. Yeah, it's a good. Uh Good idea. I need to talk to the to the stock team to be honest. But uh, that is a good I will idea remember though. it's a good idea. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Just need to. Yeah. So there, this to create I just, a process. Yeah, I'm just pushing this back behind her to hold her edge a little bit more, to create a little more contrast. Oh yeah. Mm. You know, because she has such contrasting shadows and um, yeah, you know, but blacks the and whites. Yeah. So it, it mm. needs to kind of match up. Uh, Ryan is asking how many hours on average do you spend on one project, I guess. Yeah, I think we talked about this yeah. a little bit the other day, but it's, you know, it can be, you know, if it's something like this, it's, you know, of course I'd be doing skin cleanup, probably more tone work on her, doing some wardrobe fixes. And uh, so research. So of, uh, yeah, and ladies. research. Well, we'd probably shoot back plates and hmm. people. So, uh, but the Photoshop part, you know, something like this would probably be, a full day's worth of work, mm -hmm. maybe two, but that's being broke up by other projects. Yeah. So usually we string a timeline for this, you know, seven to ten days, just you know, so that it's just in the production workflow. Um, but if you know, if and they I had to have a mad rush on it, then yeah, we would. If you have to, yeah. you know, you go gangbusters and go crazy and drink a lot of coffee and then get it done at like three in the morning and pass it off. So you know, you do what you got to do, but. Um, good questions, but some projects I've worked on projects that are complex that, you know, 30, 60 days worth of no. work. Um, those are usually pretty large campaigns with a lot of compositing. Um, so it can range anywhere. How are you get a call uh, from Adobe? What's that? Or you get a call from Adobe? For That's the right. Or you get a call make a from piece? Adobe and say, hey, do this simple, build a masterpiece with stock photos. It's, you'll just knock it out. Yeah, let me find the... Yeah. The one you did. Uh, you just keep bringing that out, don't you? <laughs> Is it this one? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Play the play the. Can you yeah, share yeah, yeah. yours? That's yeah. That's what I'm trying to play see. the video. That's. Okay. So you will see the. I will show you the that's campaign. Yeah, Makeamasterpiece.com. And that's the one made by Mike. And this one week later, goes, <laughs> yes. and that's going two weeks quick. later. Yeah. Oh. Well, actually, I can. Um, I'll oh, pull it up on my cool, Behance. Cool. It's on my Behance. Drag the layers to explore. Oh. Mm. oh. I don't even think I've seen that. Okay. Let's see. Oh, oh, just so you can look at details and, no, look and at it shows you the all the stock photos that were used. Yeah. Huh. That's a new one. That's I think nice. that's been added. Ooh. Look at the details. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You were crazy on the show. <laughs> yep. I know all about the those. Trees. 
it's funny Ooh. to see that the houses like they are they have no oh yeah and each like, and each roof, like even this like each what? roof was oh my like god look look yeah i mean i can click on the picture it will show me where you used it yeah yeah so if you look at like that tiny window and column <laughs> that's just that that's just area. that just that little area so <laughs> uh, that's interesting i didn't know that was up it's good huh? yeah Oh yeah, just that on the white background. Oh yeah, details. Yeah. Is it in the original and painting? This? It, yeah, that's an anchor. That's just a treble fish hook. So I had to like, <laughs> you know, distort it and scale what, it. What? What is this one? What? Why did you do? It? Oh, the hat. Oh, the hat. The hat. Because the guy is yeah. he goes crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know what else you'd use that stock photo for, but the, it worked for the hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and this one. Oh, that's for all the. Oh no! That's all, all the, the guys. The well, that's all the people and in this. the background. What is the it? Back. For the water? For uh, it could be arms. Oh, the arms. Arms and. And this guy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, for this one. Yeah. Oh, so some of them you can tell. Yeah, but so some cool. are distorted. But the trees. I mean, even the little statues. Oh yeah, the, yeah. The know. statues. Oh, you yeah. had to take pictures from Greece, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, that was a. Uh, so yeah, that so was a challenge. So if you go to my Behance, you see that you know I have everything. Yeah, let me show you. Here. Can you give me a screen. Yeah, so I you know, oh, built yeah, yeah, a project. So I just did a film <laughs> strip of all the things that are in there, and these are like I said, these are just the ones I used. But um, and then there's a step by step. You can see, you know, it just kind of goes through. You know, I just took different phases yeah. and, and, and did it in there. Yeah, yeah, that was fun. Do you know that some uh, are printed? Yeah, they said they were at Adobe Max. They did. Uh, I just did. I was out of town during Max, or otherwise I would have gone and looked at it. No, because I saw some uh, in the building. Oh, they probably brought them back from yeah. Max because they did a gallery show. Yeah, I got to check it out. See what it looks like. Yeah, big. we can go upstairs because okay. it's, it's, it's big. And oh. there is the original. Yeah. And yours. You see nice. Right? Nice. Yeah. We will go and take a picture. Okay. And share it on Twitter eventually. All right, we always circle back to that, but we All got it right. out of the way. All right. <laughs> and we will do a giveaway, by the way. Yeah, sorry. Mm. So we'll give away uh, to someone in the chat a Creative Cloud subscription. So you can do the same using Photoshop CC um, because it's part of Creative Cloud, but you will also get an access to all the creative apps. So After yeah. Effects, from to add some yeah. animations, Illustrator, yeah. InDesign. Um, so what? you have to do is just type a keyword in the chat and um, if you subscribe to the YouTube Creative Cloud channel it will give you five times more chances to win okay five times so the keyword is we talked about that's the five. yeah five that's five times okay five times more chances okay. to win so we talked about the bulky effect yeah we had this conversation uh, is it bulky or bulky yeah because it, it, every com way. it comes from um, the, the country yeah the origins a specific country, so we want you to type the name of the country in the chat. Okay, the bulky effect. And go. Uh, go. <laughs> okay, so what okay. should we be doing now? Okay, so I think I'm I'm good with this for now. I mean, there's probably other techniques of just oh, it looks great. refining her and getting a little more light and shadow in the background, but I think it's, it's good enough for now. I was just going to move on to the Mm -hmm. Next fun thing that we could Let's do. do um, so let me just close these things out. Some people try like friends. No. Oh no no. Okay. Japan, you. <laughs> I think I think they all watched. <laughs> they I'm pretty sure. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they did because they're rolling in now. All right. Oh, there's a delay, you know, between the what we say. Yeah. In the chat, there was like at least 30 seconds. Yeah. No, so I know. I'm just saying it's, it's just rolling. But yeah. All right. Well, while those are coming in. Oh, yeah. Simon really uh, yelled it loud. Be careful. Long. Nightbot <laughs> yeah. doesn't like it. <laughs> the bot will not pick that up. You might want to re-enter it. All right. So this was the teaser that talked about yesterday doing something kind of fun with. Quit out of my. Oh yes, uh, talking about uh, fluids and yeah, yeah, just okay. some water effects and just so kind of having some fun with it. So 
Just um, announced the winner. And oh. the winner is... Alejandro Costilla. I think he was with us on day one. I remember this name, Alejandro Costilla. He was from, uh, I think, Buenos Aires, okay. if I remember well. But uh, let us know in the chat, Alejandro. Uh, congratulations. But I think you were with us and you told us that you were from Argentina. Mm. Nice. Maybe well, I'm congrats, completely wrong. Alejandro. You say, no, I'm from Korea. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you say, I'm oh. from Japan. That's how I knew the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. <laughs> like you're speaking my language. <laughs> All right, awesome. So we're just gonna isolate this boot and I didn't wanna bore you with pathing exercises so I just did it before I came in today to save you all that time. Um, oh yeah, we uh, yeah. You have the path ready? The path's ready to go. Good. Um, okay, I'm looking for the chat, Alejandro, oh. cause I need your Twitter. Okay, congrats. Oh, here we go again with my laptop keyboard. Ah. All right. Yeah, Alejandro, if you can give me your Twitter handle in the chat so I can contact you. So I will do, um, oh, that's why. There we go. And then I just feather it half a pixel again just to shift the anti-aliasing a little bit. A oh, little yeah. Softer no. edge so it doesn't have that. The mic trick. Yeah, the yeah. clean cut line. Compo trick. I mean, you could go five. into, you could do the hard cut line, go into refine edge, yeah. and do a, a feather as well. You know, that's another way. I just feather it ahead of time because I just know I always just kind of do a half a pixel. So, um, so, oh, come on, whack them. Oh, thanks for sharing on Twitter. I handle. I'm going to make this a little lower res here. He's from Argentina. Yep. There we go. Yeah, see, your memory's not failing you yeah. yet. <laughs> <laughs> Still have a few days. That's right. It'll settle Memory. in. Don't worry, it'll settle in. All right, I'm just going to give us a background canvas here to work on. Do something kind of fun. All right, so I just isolated this boot. I think I need to pump it up a little bit. Of course, it always looks dark to me because these lights are just shining yeah, in my no face. Stuff. Here um, is better, but even well, even that if I uh, because of the lights. Yeah, yeah the lights, but because um, so you know, the past couple of days. So at I home you don't work with the. Uh, no, like I just don't shine a light in, the, in my in face head. while I'm working. <laughs> like it, I know it's odd. I maybe if it was like a tanning light and make me feel like I'm outside in the sun all oh. day, maybe. But so my vitamin e. um, you're from michigan <laughs> yeah the sun's you never out it, yeah. <laughs> 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 not this time of year all right so i'm gonna punch this up a little bit like i said I, it could be fine i it's just hard for me to see with these lights in my face so i'm gonna just add that to it a little bit all right so i think i want to almost give the effect that this boots kind of moving through the air and the water's just flying off of it. Oh, yeah, um, okay. So let's see. I know so I so pulled some so water. So this booty is very wet. Like it is there. very yeah. wet. Almost like it like hit some water oh, yeah, and it's trailing. Maybe it's trailing through or it's cat. It's making the water motion. Kind of like the, um, the Brita image with Steph Curry where mm, his like motion was creating the, the splashes yes. yeah, yeah. coming off. So you play soccer. That's right. Oh, by the way. I've discovered the uh, video today of the most ridiculous uh, on goal in soccer. Oh, the on goal? You know the on goals. Usually it's always like super fun. Yeah. I think I, I found the champion. Yeah. Uh, I, I need to find a video. I need to show it. you guys yeah. because I, I mean, I'm, I, I, I like soccer. You, oh, I, you, I've you, played since you I was four years old. You're a soccer man? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Still we play. We speak the same language. Yeah. You still play? Yeah. Okay, you're better than me. No. <laughs> well, when French, I know we don't. Yeah. We don't practice. French aren't. No, Very good no sport. At soccer. No, <laughs> we were good one year. <laughs> no, we, we no, had oh. we had one year. Oh, well then you're still better in than 19, the U.S. So. 1990. Yeah, <laughs> I remember that year because that's the only other team that I root for outside of the U.S. Oh, yeah, because well, oh, I, yeah, I have to. origins. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Oh, no, I need to find this video. Okay, 
All right, so I'm just going to start dropping some of these. This is the best. Okay. Um, in here. I don't know what I'm going to use yet, but I'll figure something out. Okay, I'm going to show it to you. All right. So and it's a real um, so it's not like first league it's like second league okay. in a European country I won't I won't quote the country because I don't want to be mean with them because it's really <laughs> one of the okay. worst on goal I've ever seen. All right. Okay. So the goalkeeper penalty situation. Okay. Goalkeeper gotcha. super Shoot. excited. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He blocks the ball, and then his teammate congratulations, bro. <laughs> <laughs> they should on goal. They should and have then uh, look at the rage, oh, the rage. Oh. He's like, no. Oh. The ref should have blew the whistle because it was a handball before. Just because he said, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, should have been another PK. Yay. Oh. <laughs> oh. See, oh. celebration can hurt you. Like oh Gramatica breaking his leg after making a field goal. Yeah, and then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, then bro <laughs> and then broken leg. Yeah. Oh, boo. All right. Okay, so I'm just setting these, you know, I just pulled some on black, um, just setting them to screen right now because we're on black, so you can get away with it, cheat it a little bit. Um, same with this one. Let's just set this to screen. And yes, feel that count because it's still in the game. You know, yeah. it's a penalty, you block yep. the ball, and you're, you're still playing. It's still live. Yeah. It wasn't um, a it's shootout. Not, yeah, it's not a shootout. shootout. Like at the end of the match, yeah. if the. The goalkeeper okay. blocks the ball, then yeah, it's over. All right, so I'm gonna just rasterize this so I can start pulling it apart. So I'll just do a. Oh, come on, whack him! <laughs> whack him, please! Whack him! You can make it. So I'll just do cut, paste in place. So that's Command Shift V. Back to screen, and then I'll just use this as like my master. Um, just kind of refer to it to pull different elements out that I need. But the water again? Was it unstuck too? Yep, Adobe stock. It's good. Just huh? pulled, yeah, just it's pulled a couple. To, to take a picture like this. Now. Yeah, so, well, and it, it might not be practical for you too. I mean, even if you have a photo studio, yeah, if I, too. you know, I could go and like throw yeah, water all day it, yeah. and shoot, but especially if I'm on a deadline or I'll just yeah, it's I'll better just to pull I'll just pull as much stock as I can it's and better to burn one credit on stock than uh, <laughs> that's right. okay then shoot some wider today yeah better to spend one credit and then short out my strobes by yeah. throwing water at them so <laughs> um, so I'm just looking for shapes that um, you know will kind of mimic or follow the shoe shape um, so I thought this is this looks pretty cool now I notice if I'm dragging this around, I can see some haloing. So that means that there's some blacks oh. that aren't black. In the mask? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So if I go to levels, you can see in the histogram. Oh, good cut. It's like, ah. Plus with this light, I'm surprised I caught it, but I got it. Um, <laughs> and then I'm just going to pump up the mid-tones a little oh, bit. Oh, yes. There we go. Wow. There we it go. It looks good already. So I, yeah, I kind of like it running mm -hmm. along, oh, along yeah, this. With the strike. Yeah. Um, now, I would want to keep some of the shape of the shoe, just because if, if I was doing this for a product, I'd want to make sure that the integrity of the shape of the shoe, uh, the shoe is like true to the real product. So I'm just gonna, and I'll do a. I'm gonna do a liquify, but I always kind of select so I don't get a liquify screen that's like the whole canvas I'll do a selection around it for anything Ooh. I liquefy so that it brings it it's better also for the computer no? right for the performance. Ex exactly and it, it moves quicker um, you know oh it yeah brings it up you know right here so um, showed your backdrop so I know this boot kind of goes up here let me and it defaults to all layers and see this is where I should name my layers and then I'd know which one the boot is but I'm gonna guess. Um, um, oh, 
see. I'm gonna have to look now. Background copy. I should have known that. That's obvious. <laughs> I copied that because I got. Well, I copied the background to make it. So, <laughs> <laughs> obvious. All right, there we go. Um, and the reason I picked that layer and not all because when you start liquefying, there's a ghost of the layer you're working on in there, and it gets confusing. So I'll show. Yeah. So if you do all layers and I start moving, Oof. there's yeah, of course. you know in this area. Uh, let me. Yeah. Uh, it's like living in the past. It's yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And then I start getting overlaps, and I'm not sure what I liquefied and what I didn't. So, um, so I just pick the object I'm trying to match to, um, and then brush commands same in liquefy as they are in Photoshop. So if you control Option, mm. you can. And I want this one to kind of follow this. Yeah. That little contour there, just like it caught that channel. Um, all right, all right, that's better. So now it feels like it wraps underneath um, the boot there. So let's start looking. Well, you know what? I'm gonna. I'll just skip to a technique. So this water's just setting on top. It's a screen layer. Um, you know, when we talked about yesterday that we want some integrity of that boot showing through you know some waviness refractions yeah um, but also the color tone of the water is going to take on what it's oh. refracting behind it yeah. so um, I'm going to just take this boot make a duplicate of it mm -hmm. oh. drag it on top light link it or layer link it clipping link whatever clipping mm -hmm. mask yeah. pass layer whatever you and know, clip it something just clip it just clip it and do soft light. Now the water takes on the property of the boot. So now it feels more natural. Here, get in closer. Yeah. So now there's the variation <laughs> in that shape. So there's that. And I'll do that at 50%. And then let's duplicate this again. Do normal. And I'm going to create a master. Well, Nate is asking, could you convert uh, the water to uh, paint, for instance? So I guess like now it looks like uh, you know, transparent, like water. So um, would it be easy to colorize it. Uh, no, because no, because it's Too paint. Much, uh, well, paint's opaque, so yeah. you could make it like colored no. water. Like if I was doing. Um, like if this was juice, oh, juice. No, for like the buy. Well, I, I can even show you. Um, it's a good question because <coughs> I originally did this project. <laughs> um, oh, I'm not in Behance. That's why it's not. I was on my website. Sorry, it doesn't do the. So when I rendered this, they originally were all sort of like water sprit sprays. And they probably ran a year and then they wanted to update this and said, well, let's get it the juice color. And I <laughs> said, oh, Ooh, OK, that sounds like fun. And I didn't want to re-render everything because it would have just been painful. Um, but I had masks for all my liquid. Oh, steel. So yeah. I was able to add color to it and tone and just use curves and overlays and a little bit of brushwork with color okay. to change the water to a juice. So yeah, you couldn't change it to paint because paint's opaque and you can't see through it. Yep. But the juice, you know, if you want to make colored water, yeah, absolutely. And um, this is a 3D or is it a... Yeah, that was 3D. Wow. But it was, the fruit was all shot I shot in studio. Oh, okay. But everything else was three, three. with a little bit of water and stock splashes okay. like thrown in. Well, wow. because to do all that simulation CGI's in this case, do you create the concept or? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you, you that said that we will take the bottle and yep. yeah, slice I did, it. Yeah. I did that as a test. They were a client I was doing there and we can go back to that. 
let's go to the Behance one. So we were, I was already doing their um, packaging, which is these things. Okay. Uh, let me bring them up. So we were doing all these CGI, um, their bottles, cans, um, some other flavors. So while I had this, this is the CGI scene. <laughs> um, since I had it, I sliced it up and I did a test. And it's like, well, I, you know, it's not like um, it's a real product. I can do whatever I want since it's CGI. And then sent them the test and they were like, oh, that's awesome. That's like perfect for our brand. So um, mm -hmm. it just kind of evolved into, and this is the latest ones where there's <laughs> they're doing multiple flavors together. Oh, so you have which was even yeah, yeah, which made funny. it even more complicated because you have two different color liquids going together. So it was it was challenging, um, but it's a fun project. So there's no fruit in this boot, but we got liquid. And Steve is asking, do you use real flow for liquid simulation? Um, I guess it's a plugin for yeah. That's um, I have I don't personally. Things that's a pretty specialty thing, but I have uh, a team of guys who do those for me. So they'll run some simulations based on my direction, and they'll send me the models, mm -hmm. um, and then I'll take the models and apply them into the scene. And, and then I use a lot of um, particle effects and replicators to do the drops and stuff. But that probably only makes sense to people that do CGI and not Photoshop. But I guess I'm speaking to them right now. <laughs> <laughs> Please, <laughs> yeah. All right, so back to our boot. Um, so here's the soft light, here's the normal. So this one, I'm just gonna make a master boot. Uh, that is gonna be the refracted part. So I'm gonna add some waves to this. I'm gonna just go distort, um, ripple, Let's do some large. Alexandre, no, uh, Mike doesn't do animation with the 3D object. With, uh, no, not my thing. No. Sorry. <laughs> I always think to myself, man, maybe one day I'll start doing. Mm. No, it's just you're already busy. Anyway. Yeah, I, if I had time, I that would be my exploration. But I, I personally, like I said, I don't have the attention span and mm. um, to do video just because it takes so long to work on a project frame by frame by frame, especially CGI and then doing the compositing. Um, mm -hmm. I'd rather work a few days on an image project, be done, you know, move on to the next one. It keeps life interesting. All right, let's go ripple. Why is this not? There you are. Um, all right, so, okay. you know, it's adding just subtle waves and mm -hmm. Uh, we can maybe go a little bit more. Let's go large. Um, just to give it a little bit of a ripple effect. So when there's turbulence in the water, it's going to create that refraction. So I'm just creating this master boot okay. um, that I can drop into. Clipping mask? Yeah, into the clipping mask, and then I will mask it. And I can use this. Oh, so you decide where you want to show the yeah the weird shoe, right? Like where it uh, gets where you see turbulence, so you know. So you might not be able to see it. Oh, it's brushing on the layer. Hold on. There we go. Uh, now make sure I'm painting on the layer mask. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this you're probably not going to see too much because it's in a dark area, but we'll use this master in like the lighter parts where it becomes a little more obvious. So a question from Daniel, uh, what's your criteria in deciding whether to use photography or CGI? Um, practicality, um, 
which is going to get the best result. You know, sometimes people will, they get enamored with things being CGI and they don't need to be CGI. They'll call and say, hey, we want to do this CGI where I could probably set up a tabletop mm -hmm. and shoot it in an hour or two, you know, set up lighting. And then it would take me two, three days to get it photorealistic and yeah. CGI. So, you know, sometimes people are enamored with it and want to just do CGI to say they're doing CGI for their mm -hmm. project, but it's not necessary. So I'll try to consult um, my clients and say, you know what, let's, that's not the best route. One, it costs more money because it's more time. Let's just set up a quick shoot, but I can supplement maybe this part and this part CGI because that's hard to capture in camera. Like the sliced cans, you know, if they said, yeah. oh, let's do sliced cans. Well, you could probably do it practically, but that will be painstaking to set up in studio. We'll probably do require some propping and model sets and um, you know, if I can do that CGI and then supplement it with a little photography with the fruit sliced in, because those are the elements that, yeah, I could build those CGI, but I can also go in a studio, cut some fruit, and have that in 15 minutes. So, <laughs> you know, that's where I kind of just weigh the, you know, it's just the practicality of one over the other is sort of the deciding factor for me, because it all comes down to budget. So yeah. what I've heard is that sometimes... Uh, with your customer, you tell them, uh, yeah, we'll do the CGI. So you sell yeah. uh, 10 days of project, but you just take a picture. So that's what I've heard. Oh, yeah. no, uh, not at should. all. No. Oh, 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 are we giving away something now? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, prizes. <laughs> uh, just trying to distract yeah, people. It's a good business. A good yeah, <laughs> try to distract people. Look, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's just move on. Let's look for another one. Um, I want something off of the front of this boot. So let's uh, open up our master oh, we here. We have Teresa in the chat. Just starting using Photoshop a mm. month ago. Whoa. Oh, that's great, well, Terry. Oh, Thanks that's for watching. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. And she and uh, says seeing your professional work is pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, I hope thank it you. will uh, yeah. inspire you and uh, don't hesitate to share also what you are doing with Photoshop. You know, even beginners, you know, don't be shy. Someone has uh, to start. Share on, on Twitter, uh, adding the Adobe Live hashtag. Okay. And you, you get a chance actually to win a Creative Cloud subscription. So my advice to someone new in Photoshop yeah. is to just keep making images and I'm going to tell you now they're going to suck, but just keep Maybe doing it. Keep, keep doing it. I mean, it's just like anything sports, yeah. you know, yeah. anything It's practice, practice, practice to the point where you're not thinking about the how to do it. And you're thinking more about the why you're doing it mm. and more about the image and you're thinking about more about composition lighting. I know when you start, when I started out, I was so all over the place with the tools and how to get something done more than worrying about what the image looks like. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, and that only comes with practice to where it's just like photography, getting used to a camera, you know, you shoot and you're so worried about how do I set my lighting up, my aperture, my shutter speed. Yeah. And you, and you, you're worried about that technically, but then your and subject's so just standing there like <laughs> lifeless and you're like, okay, that's, terrible shot so um, once you get past that then you can start working on the image itself um, so that's just my advice is and there's always an undo button so don't be afraid to try something or or mess your file up all right cool um, I'm just trying to get something off of this actually let me check check Twitter and and uh, Instagram. Okay. Maybe we have yeah. some. So we have been amazed uh, over the three days by w what has been shared by our friends. So I, I give you uh, <coughs> two more minutes if you want to share uh, some pictures. Okay. Yeah, in the meantime, I'm just going to start to liquefy this one on the toe. Mm -hmm. And just get it shaped a little bit better. Okay, remember background copy because I copied the background. 
or so didn't logical. have to go back that time. See, I don't need to label my layers. I know what I'm doing. <laughs> All right. I'm just shaping that around the toe. And then this is a case where this ripple. Oh, whack them. Okay. And <laughs> plug. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I, I put the ripple below the screen water layer so that mm -hmm. um, so that it doesn't affect I don't know why I didn't do that before but so when I brush it in it's oh below yeah. the water so yeah. now it gives that kind of refracting feel mm -hmm. so now there's some turbulence of the water so now oh, I nice. will take this <laughs> and and then go in with some liquify to just do a little bit bigger waves and ones that follow the shape of that water drop so now I can go in let's just turn this off oh that's why it's black because I brushed on it but that's all right we can we can fake that in there So now this looks like the water's affecting, you know, refracting through there. So you're seeing through. So without, yeah, water on a boot. So this was kind of what I was seeing yesterday with those water yeah. treatments, and and now, and well, now, now it something looks like it looks like water. there's something between, you know, uh, like you're looking through glass or water or whatever. So that's great. Um, now, typically on this, I probably wouldn't keep it. Do that sign like the water over there for the client, but for us, yeah. no one's complaining. That's a great example. Okay. Um, you want to check some stuff? Yeah, let's. Yeah, I'll take a break. And okay, so oh, what time? Oh, time's flying today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about water, we have Havenbound Customs. See, doing some also. Like a magician. Yeah. That's right. And I disappear. Oh, it's a eh, that's <laughs> funny. That reminds me, I just finished up sort of the invisible Hollow Man project for. Ah. Well, I won't say for who because it's not out yet. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's cool. So he had the Hollow Invisible Man, but filled with water. <laughs> nice. But I think that's a technique that you can definitely, you know, use. Yeah, this no, technique apply. Here yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you were, yeah. so it was a good idea to, to watch the stream today. Mm -hmm. And then uh, snow. Tiffany also watching the stream. Some snow. Working on some composites. Frozen LA. Oh, yeah. Oh. Here we go. Yeah. Downtown. Right. I'd probably add some more depth to your snow. Right now, mm -hmm. it feels like it's a lot just right in front of camera. And then it's so clear in the, back. in the background. Mm. Um, I'd also, you were showing how to... It, well, and add some it, light also. Like yeah, well, atmosphere, like you know, yeah, almost okay. like a fog. Like yeah. you, those buildings would have atmosphere compared to that front building. So you want to, you know, put a little milky fog in front of those, and that'll make a huge difference in that image. But nice job, nice, Marius. Oh, my second Photoshop attempt. There we go. Yeah. I think we can use the technique in the foreground there. So just yeah. underneath that, do some ripples, some liquify, and that'll make that water feel like it's on top of that surface. Because mm. right. right now it's, you know, and if you don't do it, it looks like it's pure glass. But obviously, rippled, turbulent water isn't pure glass. There's going to be all kinds of cool shapes and stuff in it. Okay. Alexandre, who has been uh, on the stream with us, in Illustrator oh, and Photoshop, Electric Wires. Yeah, CIA design, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like the electric. Yeah, yeah, it's working well together. Yeah. Here is a uh, Philippe. 
Okay, is it a dog with a Yeah, it's a double exposure on yeah, the dog. Double exposure. I like the tone here. Oops, I like yeah. the color palette. Yeah. All right, what do we got here? Ooh. Oh, a new nice. fragrance launch. Okay. Hmm? I like it. Yeah. It's actually, it's a cart. It's small. Yeah. It's flowers and no, it's nice. It's nice. I huh? mean, it's nice blending. I like the the tone of the background. It's nice. It's graphic. Also here, oh, you see uh, the effect you were showing, like also with the. Uh huh. Yeah. 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 Good, con good tricks. Bokey. Bokey and uh, a kind of blur yeah. also. To well, and also a foreground element. Yeah. You know. It's nice. It's huh? always nice to have the foreground, background. Very dramatic. Yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Very good. What is this? Yeah. Ah, it's oh, a it's portrait. The silhouette, yeah, out of silhouette wood. Silhouette with the wood. Yeah, I like it. It's graphic. It almost should be like an app an icon. Or an something. icon, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, great white. Okay, walking on the campaign. Ah, it's, it's a bit small. Uh oh. And oh, what happened, oh, Philip? Is that Philip? What happened? Is that Kerberos? Oh, is it, it even says that Kerberos. Yeah. <laughs> you know what Kerberos is, don't you? Yeah. The yeah. Cerber. Well, it also was wasn't it Keeping the first hailed. wasn't it the first internet server? Oh yeah. Severed, yeah. Yeah. But unfortunately, this is not photoshopped. So you, oh you should boy. call a doctor you it because they, they that's that's that probably fun in the dog park. Not <laughs> Do you bring three balls or just one? That's the question I have. And uh, also, we had some work shared on the. Oh, this one I, I saw it this morning. It was interesting. Using Project yeah. Felix and the renderer. Yeah. Oh, First actually, time I caught it. that. You know, I yeah, you I tuned it? in. I had a little break today, and I tuned in to Corey, and I saw that. So yeah, it was good. Some work inspired by uh, Victor Asimer, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, here, it's oh, very professional. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, very nice. And this one, what's happening here? Mm -hmm. Okay, what kind of wine glass. Oh, it almost looks like a mushroom cloud, but it's a wine glass. Like oh, that's for when I when it was small, yeah. it looked like a mushroom cloud. But so and wine, kind of wine can be very here. nuclear. <laughs> if you drink too much, drink too much, can destroy boom. everything. Everything. Good job, man. Huh? All right. Thanks for sharing. And again, uh, tomorrow we will announce uh, ten people who shared uh, compositing art. We'll announce ten winners on Twitter on my uh, Twitter account, actually. All right. So. I'm to gonna root. try to yeah we're we're getting tight on time I will try to on get time as time you get oh ten minutes oh you're good like twelve actually twelve oh so no all right well let's rock and roll with some water let's try to just get some more in here so again playing off of the shapes. That's uh, working. Remember our blacks went a little too. Pump this up a little bit. Maybe scale it. Just get something going off the top here. All right, let's liquefy this. Show backdrop, background copy. And uh, nothing pulled. I mean, is it a? Uh Thomas Bashar on Behance, just to make sure. Like, you, he, and, uh, like yesterday also, he, he asked us to review something. I just want to make sure Nathan Paul that this is uh, Thomas Bashar on Twitter. Just uh, let me know in the chat. All right, so I'm you just so we'll review one of your picture. The active Creo one, is it the one? All right, so I'm just gonna get this to yeah, run Sean, along this Yeah, Sean, work on the wood silhouette. It really looks like, yeah, an app icon. Woodman, Mr. Woodman. Woodman. Would be a great game. It's where you find w lumber yards in your area. And he will, uh, maybe a game where he can work and, uh, and avoid uh, fire. You know? Or is it, log? what is it? Uh, I don't know. Is it Ren and Stimpy? Was log, log, it's big, it's heavy, it's wood. Maybe that's like the theme oh. song for the app. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I think we got some nice shape there. Yeah, it looks like it's wrapping. So we do a quick review for Nathan because he was asking yesterday also. Oh. 
We want to, ha to have your uh, advice on uh, work like this. Okay, go ahead. Improve. Um, oh. Okay, so the, that's the, final, the object is the CGI, I'm guessing. Uh, yeah. I think cut, scroll back down to the, yeah, because clearly, you know, I think these are like work in progress, I'm guessing. Yeah, I'm guessing. So, and that's the final. Yeah. Yeah, it's, I mean, the finals look pretty good color, tone. Mm -hmm. um, again, this is, you're dealing with the product, so I don't know if you would want. Oh, to like add more snow or just get rid of the snow in general because now you have little uh, on top dots of on the product mm. and especially something like this like um, keep it clean and maybe just it's a calm blue sky on this frozen lake bed but yeah no good stuff cool. probably a little separation in background too but I think it's it's looking good nice work thanks, thanks for the feedback yeah. alright so let's get our Master Squiggly boot. Oh, whack em. Again. Again. For some reason, it keeps holding option down when it's not supposed to do anything. All right. I guess he's just a stylus. It, it's, it's one of the other. Well, I have touch off, and, it's oh. and it was like, see, it's, oh, yeah. see, it's doing something. Something. Yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't know. Man, I sure could use a new Wacom. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> they released some <laughs> yeah. some tablets. You know, since yeah, this one. <laughs> yeah so, I don't know what year this is, but hey, I I just retired a beige. Ooh, um, yeah, the first like USB beige one I just retired because that was my that was my go-to. Like they make anything in beige anymore, but no beige. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we're just gonna brush in some of this. Are. Yeah. No, it's Max. I've tried the new Wacom Studio. That's the name. Uh, now they have this new generation of uh, tablets with uh, more than eight thousand pressure levels. Oh. When usually, if you are like two thousand, it's uh, like uh, it used to be the max, you know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But now uh, all the new uh, Wacom tablets, eight thousand. And uh, we were with Kyle, Kyle Webster, so the author of the of Kyle Brush, mm -hmm. and he said, uh, "Actually, it's a big deal." Like you can okay. really feel the difference. Oh. So but what happens if I just crush it down the whole time? Does it matter for me? It creates a hole. Oh, okay. Know. All right. Like in the picture. <laughs> okay. Just. <zzz. laughs> All right. So now this is you know when we get to edges, and I have this ripple effect which works pretty good here. I mean this looks like it's, you know the water has some turbulence Ooh, going nice. down, but then we get to this edge and it's crisp. Um, so if we turn off the regular boot see how this yep. works so we want to mask some of that boot away um, oh yeah just to create make sure some of that edge there yeah <laughs> see, I mean it's just a little detail but it's enough to trick yeah, some of the brain think, hey yeah like that water really is optical up to there. For the yep. brain. yeah and sometimes that's all it takes now that water's sitting across that boot Okay, you know I'm gonna. Is there any questions or? Because what do we have? Uh, we have yeah, it's seven minutes. Seven minutes. All right. So I don't know if anybody yeah. has questions or anything. anything. Yeah. Um, We're live for seven minutes with Mike Campo, and this is the last live of this stream on uh, Adobe Live. Three days of uh, compositing in Photoshop. Yeah, fun. We will be back on Adobe Live every two weeks. Okay, so next week. Nothing. You can practice. You can watch the replay. It would be available on AdobeLive.com and also on the Creative Cloud YouTube channel. Uh, and then within two weeks, we will be back with four European graphic designers. Uh, some of them will work on packaging, other on the magazine, and they will share, you know, how to deal with typography, uh, composition, the grid. You have a graphic design background, right? Yep. 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 And uh, they will talk about car theory and create, uh, yeah imaginary magazine so this oh. should be interesting nice and um so this will be on february seven eight nine it's always more or less the same hours okay all right so now i'm just looking for shape and so composition if you want to reach mike after this stream uh he's on twitter it's a uh, mike campo one word he's on behance too 
Mm -hmm. You can send uh, also private messages on Behance. I guess, I, I guess we can all say uh, thank you to, to Mike. It was uh, no, uh, thank you for having me. Now it's been stream. Uh, San Francisco's we'll, we'll been, uh, been good to me. We'll bring you back <laughs> to be Live. And if you want to, maybe you were like, no. Yeah, maybe uh, you will have, have it's nightmares. It's exhausting. Well, just don't ask me to do a masterpiece again. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Then I'll be, I'll be good. <laughs> <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, I'll hang up. If, if I get that call, I'm hanging up. <laughs> Michael, how Adobe will find some graphic designers for streaming from behind. Uh, actually, I create uh, the guests yeah, mainly using Behance, actually. Hmm. So I check, uh, depending on the region, if, it, if we stream from Europe or from uh, San Francisco, um, who got the highest number of appreciations on a specific creative field, uh, in the previous month and all time, then give me a good idea. I look at the work, and um, and then yeah. th there are some specific projects with uh, where you can find uh, crazy guys such as Mike who worked on Make a <laughs> Masterpiece, uh, the Take Ten contest, crazy, crazy things so like that. Yeah. Oh, Wackham, you only have four minutes to hold out here. Let's go before the trash bin. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I'll put it under the plane wheel when it takes off. <laughs> <laughs> or in the, you know, like. Yeah, or in the <laughs> turbine, just. <laughs> my luck, it'd just fly out the other side unharmed. <laughs> um, okay, so, I mean, I think. Uh, uh, yeah, so. I think I'll just take some questions because I don't know if I could get done. I think I went through enough techniques, though. Um, to help you with your oh water yeah, stuff. To start, it's perfect. Yeah. Um, How to handle a refraction. Yeah. You know, get this believable look. Yeah. Yeah. Um, plus, you can do. You know, if you have water, do the soft light on top of it, which I didn't get to on these. Um, let me just throw it. So I see that some people in the chat they want to be featured on Adobe Live, but also the other way is possible. So if you if you uh, know uh, great uh, uh, designers that you want to see on Adobe Live, on a specific, no. it could be animators, it could be uh, Photoshop masters, it could be uh, graphic no, designers who really like their work, or illustrators you really like their work, uh, send me a note on Twitter. You know, uh, find me on Twitter. There is my uh, handle here <laughs> in the lower third. And uh, here, where? Oh. Okay. It's like the weather forecast. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> the fr storm say, uh, front's coming from this side. Yeah. <laughs> it happened already. Uh, mm. I've already um, invited someone on Adobe Live. That was a suggestion coming from the community. So. Oh, that's a good idea. Mm. Um, all right. Yeah. It's so good. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so and, you know, this would just be a matter of the same, but I would just keep going composition wise to get this stream maybe a little bit more refined you know this little blob over here is kind of ugly so I'd mask that out and how far do you go so let's say you you work with the customer on the campaign for this one mm -hmm. how far do you go when it comes to where to place uh, typography you know the message and the well usually you know in today's media this image has to be used across oh, yeah. like Facebook. digital and outdoor boards and events and magazines. So what I'll do is usually create a huge square image oh, okay. with the main in image the in the middle. And they can crop and do and whatever they, they can, want. Yeah, so it can do extreme oh. verticals, extreme horizontals, because otherwise, if I don't do that, they're going to come back to me every other day yeah. and say, hey, can you extend the yeah. background to the right? Yeah. Oh, we need have a, we have this like banner ad that runs vertical up a page. Can you add? So, you know, I've up front, I say, all right, I'm just giving you a big square. Deal with it. And you yeah. crop Clank. until you can't crop anymore. <laughs> 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 um, so, yeah, I mean, I think there was some resolution questions earlier. But yeah, they were talking um, about the DPI. And the right. So, you know, that's, you know, I worked in the studio and have a ton of print background and stuff too so I know you know when customers come to me I ask them up front I'm like is this going to be used outdoor board yeah. or large format because 
you know, especially even estimating jobs, I'm like, okay, is that a 5K render, you know, 5,000 pixels, or is it a 10K render, or is it a 15K render? And all that takes time for rendering, but it also means that my detail of textures and work, you have to be able to zoom in that much closer, so mm -hmm. you have to do that much more detail work. Um, so, you know, I love just digital stuff because, you know, they usually ask 4 to 5K, which is pretty much on screen, full screen, mm -hmm. and that's pretty much it. When you get into 15K renders, and I mean, it's it's a lot of work to get all that detail in there. And then when you get into Photoshop, of course, the files get, yeah. you know, enormous. Um, so, you know, that's as far as resolution. So I, 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 it runs the gamut, but I'd say typically most of my files are 8K-ish. Like and you work in 8-bit or 16-bit? We got a uh, color space. Yeah, I use 16-bit when I render out, and I use 16-bit out of Lightroom. Yeah. And then once I get it where there's any smooth gradients and I'm doing hmm. like curves or co tone work or levels or whatever, once I get that done, I'll merge it down and go to 8-bit because the hmm. agency, the printer doesn't need the 16-bit. Yeah. But it just for those smooth gradients, if it's 8-bit, sometimes it gets the banding in it. And then when you go to print and they separate and or it goes to the CMYK, it. then it's like comes Stripes. even worse. Hmm. Right. Um, so that was nice when Photoshop switched over to 16-bit because then if you did like heavy gradient stuff, oh it's yeah. way smoother. So, yeah. Great. I yeah. think it's time. Yeah. Thank you, Mike, okay. again. And well, uh, yeah, it was thanks. really a so pleasure. Fun. And yeah. Uh, yeah, hopefully you will agree to, to come back to Adobe Live one day. Yeah, well, let me just, you know, recover a little <laughs> bit and then get caught up on life. Yeah, we'll give you a few weeks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and thanks everyone yeah, for watching. thanks for everyone Three watching. Um, and uh, okay. enjoy the replays, and we'll be back awesome. on Adobe Live within two weeks from Paris to talk about graphic design. Awesome. And, and, uh, yeah. and kids, I'll be home soon. Yeah. Go to yeah. bed, Nat. Go to bed, yeah, but Go to I'll bed. be home. <laughs> okay. All right, Bye see you guys. guys.